Hi guys, um, today we will be looking at the gas exchange in leaf of a plant. So you need to be able to describe how plants exchange gases, describe the structure of the flowering plants and uh, explain the adaptations of leaves for efficient gas exchange. So in terms of the spec, we are here now. Okay, so uh, we will be looking at the uh, at the adaptations and at the limitations of the water loss in our next video. So, plant, okay, photosynthesis, respiration. You must be able to, to think about photosynthesis and respiration, okay, uh, at the same time. Why is it super important? Well, photosynthesis, it's not taking place at dark. Only respiration can take place at dark, okay? But photosynthesis and respiration both will be taking place at the daytime. Why is this the case? Of course, because uh, plants uh, to uh, undergo photosynthesis needs the sunlight. So, uh, the gases that are produced in photosynthesis, okay? So, let's quickly think about the uh, equation for photosynthesis. We need carbon dioxide, we need water, and we're producing glucose and oxygen. So that's the photosynthesis. What is the equation for respiration? It's all the way around. So the products of photosynthesis, so glucose and oxygen, are used, and the products of this equation, of this respiration, will be then, uh, would be then carbon dioxide and water. OK, so you must kind of link those together and think about the balance between photosynthesis and respiration. So uh, sometimes, OK, uh, so the, sometimes the um, amount of the gases produced in photosynthesis is enough for respiration. OK, so this we call a compensation point when we don't need to uh, when we don't need any further gas exchange to be taking place. But imagine it's a daytime, okay? It's uh, sun, sunny, uh, it's nice, and photosynthesis will be taking place at a higher rate. So, of course, then we need more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And this is where the balance between photosynthesis and respiration is coming from. So remember, look up for the compensation point. Right. So to get started, we need to recap on the structure of the uh, of the uh, chloroplast mainly. So you should remember this from section two. OK, quick checkpoint if you know what's what and that we've got. OK, so crucial things for this lesson is stomata that can open and close thanks to guard cells. The, uh, the mesophyll layers where there is a lot of space for the gas exchange. We've got the uh, upper epidermis, which is uh, which on the top of it, we've got the transparent waterproof cuticle, waxy cuticle that prevents water loss. Remember, stomata closes and opens to allow the gas exchange, but also every time it opens, water will evaporate. And finally, the structure of the chloroplast. So chloroplast, we've got a double membrane, inner and outer membrane. Uh, the inside, so kind of like a, a cytoplasm of the chloroplast, it's stroma, so the matrix inside. We've got a stack of phycolites. So phycolite is a single, uh, a single disc. Granum is then a stack of those many phycolites. OK, and intergranal lamella. So it's the it's that a bit that uh, joins the granite together. Right. So the carbon dioxide in the air outside of a leaf will reach the mesophyll cells inside the leaf. How does it take place? Of course, it takes place through the stomata. So carbon dioxide enters the leaf through the stomata. They are opened by guard cells. So this is your stomata, the guard cells here. They can open stomata. Carbon dioxide then diffuses through the air spaces, which we've got here, down diffusion gradient. Okay, so that's all clear. And, what, and sometimes the tricky questions asking you to uh, explain why uh, a leaf is an organ. So this is, of course, because it is a group of tissues working together. Right. So one more time, uh, main adaptations here. So stomata, 
Okay, so uh, this is to uh, make sure that diffusion pathway is taking place down the concentration gradient. Here, lots of air spaces uh, for the uh, rapid gas exchange. Okay. Uh, then we've got the upper epidermis with the waxy cuticle, uh, which is waterproof, so prevents evaporation, transpiration, right? And um, in some uh, some ways, the gas exchange uh, can be similar in plants to what we experience in insects. Okay, remember in insects we had spiracles. In plants, we've got stomata. We had the waxy, cuti uh, waxy layer in insects. We've got waxy cuticle in plants uh, as well. Okay, but non-living cell is far from external air. That's another thing. And diffusion takes place in the gas phase in the air, which uh, which makes it more rapid. Okay, then uh, then uh, if it uh, were in water. So adaptations of the leaf, that's the main aspect of today's sessions, there are plenty. So large surface area, the way the leaves are arranged, we've got, they are thin, they've got transparent cuticle and epidermis, mesophyll cell, chloroplast, stomata, air spaces, xylem and phloem. So all those things got specific adaptations and uh, how are we going to approach them, of course, with our so what. So large surface area, so what? So can absorb as much sunlight as possible. Arrangement of leaves on the plant uh, that minimize overlapping, so avoids the shadowing of uh, leaves. Thin, so uh, short diffusion pathway. Light absorption can be taking place. Transparent cuticle and epidermis, so let light through the photosynthetic mesophyll cells. Long, uh, narrow, upper mesophyll cells and chloroplast, so they can collect sunlight. Many stomata, okay, for gas exchange. So uh, again, a short diffusion pathway. Stomata that opens and closes. So uh, this is taking place in a response to changes in light intensity. So remember, at the daytime, you're going to have more sunlight, so the rate of uh, photosynthesis will be higher than the rate of respiration. Hence, we will need to open stomata to get in more carbon dioxide for um, photosynthesis. Many air spaces, okay, so rapid diffusion pathway, xylem and phloem, so that's nothing else than the transport of the uh, water, okay, and carrying away the sugars. Right, so the rate of water uptake by a plant might not be the same as the rate of transpiration, and why this is the case. Well, because water is used to support, okay, so remember the plant cell wall is made of cellulose, okay, they've got the massive vacuoles, so this is to do of course with the water, water used in photosynthesis, where is this coming from, of course the substrates needed for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water. Water is used in hydrolysis. Remember, reaction of hydrolysis is the addition uh, addition of water to uh, break the bonds to hydrolyze molecules, and the water is produced in a respiration. Okay, so the product of respiration is um, uh, is water and carbon dioxide. Right. Well, what is the drop of the stomata? What is stomata? So we've seen it before. So there are there are many uh, pores that we can find, especially on the lower layers of the leaf. So remember, okay, and not cells is far away from uh, uh, stom uh, stomata, so the diffusion pathway is short okay each uh, stroma is surrounded by the uh, each stomata then is uh, around the guard cells which they can close and open it should be uh, should we stomata not stroma here sorry and uh, this will control the gas exchange and of course uh, evaporation if they stay close right stomata then one more time so guard cells closing and opening them and when the levels of carbon dioxide are low 
the uh, the the star, the card cell gain water okay to become more supported more target and they curve out opening the uh, stoma and allowing gases diffuse in and out so 